And you keep it where I'm preaching in case somebody comes up. Uh, okay. No, it's, it's true. No one is over there. They think they move things around that, that we move. The Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 28. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord, my God. John, chapter 3. Your battery's going to go dead. John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It is wonderful to have a Savior that is God and God that is your Savior. It is so wonderful that we reach out to the King James Bible instead of other materials to rely on our salvation. It is the fact that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son because without Jesus Christ, without God as your Savior, there will be a place called hell for you told by us, by the Creator of hell, for Satan and His angels. You cannot faithfully say, I'm going to heaven and not have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ according to the Bible. You cannot say, oh, because of what I do is so important that when I die, things will be taken care of, not outside of Jesus Christ. For the Bible says, there is none that doeth good, no, not one. And the fact is that I hold in my hand the very Word of God, the Bible, the King James Bible. The Bible says, through the words of Jesus Christ, heaven and earth will pass away. But my word shall never pass away. And this word will re resound for all eternity. It will be as long as man is to be on this planet called earth. And there's one thing, if the Bible's correct, and it is, and if Jesus is true, and he is, he says the word of God will abound forever. And within the pages of the Bible I read, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I read. In the Bible that it says, For all have sinned. That's going to be written forever. I have read in the Bible that there is none right. That's in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible today does it say, oh, for my good works, being a good person, how wonderful I am, how great that God is pleased with what I do. That's not in the Bible. That's in a religious heresy of teaching of men and women behind pulpits that are inspired by the angel of light called Satan. And the Bible does say to the Corinthians that Satan does have his ministers. But I stand with the King James Bible to tell you that you can defeat Satan in your death. You can belong to the Jesus Christ God. You can have your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life and your reservations to a place called heaven. Without Jesus Christ, without the faith and belief in Jesus Christ, you will not go to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way. So there's got to be other ways. Jesus continued to say, I am the truth. So there's got to be a lie. And he went more to say, I am the life. And John the Baptist records in the Bible by the Holy Spirit that his words are, He that has the Son, capital S, has everlasting life. He that has not the Son, shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. So for all to go to heaven must be for all to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. 
And the Bible speaks about all going to heaven that many will go into the way that leadeth this destruction called the broad way. So the Bible teaches itself not everybody's going to heaven. So if you were to think that all people are going to heaven, you are going against the word of God because not all are going to heaven. Straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth into life. And few be that go therein. Heaven, with the entire population from the book of Acts until the rapture, of the church. All the people from Acts to the rapture, the population of this world, few will go into the gates of New Jerusalem. And more of you will go into the gates of hell for all eternity. That's the Bible. The Bible says that your faith alone is to be put into the Son of God for salvation. And that is by Jesus Christ alone. There is no I'm going to heaven outside of Jesus Christ. I'm going to heaven by being a denomination or not being a denomination. You are not going to see Jesus. If you are trusting in a denomination. And if you are a non-denominational, you are a denomination called non-denominational. Because there are a group of people called non-denomination. So let's get that fact straight. People are just so dumb, they don't realize what they're doing and what they're saying. And the fact is that I am waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not waiting for the tribulation. I'm not waiting for the Antichrist. I don't care about the 666. I'm waiting for Jesus Christ, my Savior, to come in the clouds and call up his bride, his church, to be with him. You see, you want to meet Jesus in the clouds. You don't want to meet the Jesus that's coming back to this earth. Because when he comes back to this earth, he's not a lamb no more. He's a lion with ferocious and anger to those who have rejected him. The very fact, the very way to get to heaven, to get in God's grace and mercy, is by one man and a man, Christ Jesus. And we stand here and we preach the gospel to everybody according to the scriptures, going all the world and preach the gospel. And the gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures now the bible gospel gospel means good news it's not good news that my sports team won it's not good news that the, my person got into the white house it's not good news a baby has been born the good news that jesus suffered and died and was buried and rose again according to the scriptures. The very fact that the scriptures proclaim for hopeless man the blessed hope that's in Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you here today, without Jesus Christ, you will burn in hell, but you don't have to. You need to put your faith and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ to be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth made, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. People, what I am saying to you is out of the Bible. Come over here, we'll give you our YouTube video address and all that. You can get the video and you can open the Bible yourself and say, yeah, that man is preaching from the King James Bible Scriptures. 
and you open up religious books and you say, where's the scriptures? They're not in there. And they are in there, they've been twisted, and they've been changed, and they've been diluted, and they've been looted, and they've been everything but what God has to say. Now we're here for about 45 minutes a day, on Saturday. But the message is plain and simple. In order to get saved and go to heaven, you must believe on Jesus Christ. That's it. That's the message. And if you want to conclude in anything else and then that Jesus saves, you have a message of lies and you have no hope. For Titus 2 verse 13 proclaimed that Jesus Christ is the blessed hope. And we must be aware by Matthew chapter 12 that says, Every idle word that man shall speak, he shall give an account thereof. Now I would be foolish to mention to you about a religion than Jesus Christ to be saved. Because if it's a religion, it's idle words and you'll be found wanting by God. Wanting to go to heaven instead of going to hell. Oh, we'll erase hell. We'll wipe out hell. Yeah, but there is no hell. Yet the Bible says by the Creator, by God, by Jesus, that there is a hell. And if your name is not found in the Lamb's Book of Life, you will be cast into hell by God, Jesus. Revelation chapter 20. Put that in your writing. The only hope is Jesus Christ. The only way to heaven is Jesus Christ. There is no other way. There is no other thinking. It's not, oh, it's not going to happen. It will happen. It's not, oh, what, what my church teaches. I don't care what your, teach, what your church teaches. What does the Bible say about it? And I'm here to say that if you are to put your faith in trust, in Jesus, the virgin-born child of Mary, of the tribe of Judah, who is God. And your name is written in the last book of life, you're saved. And you're going to heaven. But if you're believing in anything else, you're not safe. And hell awakes. And the Bible says that hell is growing larger every day. Every day, from coast to coast, from pole to pole, in the north and the south hemispheres, People are dying. And they're dying without hope. For there's a highway of life. It's the broad way that leads to destruction. And when they walk off that path, that broad way, and step into the gates of hell because they have not believed on Jesus, that's not final. That is not it. The graveyard is not the final resting place. And if a man is in hell today, he is not R.I.P. There is no resting in peace for a man that is burning in hell for all eternity. And in Ezekiel or Jeremiah, the Bible speaks about God saying, there is no peace, saith the Lord, to the wicked. And the wicked in this generation that are cast off into a place called hell are you that will not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. What sin must I do to go to hell? A sodomy. Molesting children. Robbing from a bank. Robbing
grabbing from mom and dad. No. Those are sins. And the wages of sin is death. We're dying because we're sinners. And yet with death prophesied that we're going to die, there's a gift of God that's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as far as our sin, behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. There is nothing else that can take away your sin but the sin that's been placed on man by Adam can only be erased by God the Son, Jesus Christ. And God the Son, Jesus Christ, in Isaiah 1, come now, let us, and God is making an imitation in Isaiah 1, that though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. You can be clean. And you can go to heaven. But you must put your faith and trust in the one that is able and will do it. You cannot put your faith and trust in no other man but Jesus Christ. Any other man other than Jesus Christ like you is a sinner and is indebted to God. And you cannot in un indebt yourself to God by someone who else is in debt. That'd be like going to a broker that is bankrupt or going through bankruptcy. Sir, you can't handle your finances. Will you take care of my finances? That'd be a fool. And yet, the Bible says you are fools for not trusting what the Bible says. Some fools say that there is no God in their heart. That's called atheism. In the Bible, it's called fool. Psalms. And what we preach out of the King James Bible. You will stand before God one day and we preach that you will stand before God by and through Jesus Christ alone and you'll be saved. Now we've all sinned and we'll have to all give an account for sin. But if you were to trust on Jesus Christ and be washed of your sins, You can get your name written down the Lamb's Book of Life and be saved. But that must come by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. See, Isaiah, God is so cruel and so wicked as some would proclaim him to be. Isaiah 1 Verse 18, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And when we turn to Revelation, the last book in the Bible, Revelation 20. In verse 15 and 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life 
was cast into the lake of fire. And the only way to get your name into that book of life is by the gospel of Jesus Christ that he suffered and died according to the scriptures. And was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. There's nowhere written in the Bible what you have done, what you will do, and what you have done to be right with God. Nowhere, nowhere, where God will count a man into heaven except by Jesus Christ. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death has no more dominion over him. For, he, for in that he died. He died unto sin once. And that he liveth, he liveth unto God. See, I don't need a God I've got to kill every week or every day. I've got a God that died once for our sins. And he lives once for our sins. And that he died according to the scriptures. And that the scriptures say if you were to put your faith and trust in him. And him alone. Thou shalt be saved. There is none that doeth good. <coughs> there is none righteous. No, not one. In the day of reckoning of God's account, you better have the account settled through the blood of Jesus Christ to be saved. Your account book better be erased by the blood of Jesus Christ to enter to God's heaven. The account was settled long ago upon a hill called Calvary. And there was one man on that hill that died for all mankind. And it's not you. It is the sinless, innocent, I find no fault, man named Jesus. And in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, he suffered and died according to the scriptures that you may have life. And that you may have life more abundant in Jesus rather than hell by anything and everything else. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. That peace, that imputation, is only by the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Without Jesus Christ, your sin debt is growing where you may think it's getting better. There is nothing that can cancel away sin. And then the work that was done upon the cross, the cross of Jesus, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world, there is no other. 
There is no other substitute. There is no other way for you to die and go to heaven except by Jesus Christ. Your religion will be cast into a furnace of fire along with you. Your goodness that you do not have will be at fault and will be at need before the great white throne of God. And yet, if you were to put your faith and trust in Jesus and be saved and die in Jesus, the Bible says to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Oh, so there is an outer body experience. And for a man that is saved, it is to take your soul and have it go to God through Jesus. Or it's a man to take his soul and to enter eternity into hell by everything but Jesus. And the Bible does speak about an afterlife. And that afterlife is heaven or hell. There is nothing else. What we see with our eyeballs is temporal. You will die and enter into eternity one day. The Bible says that this earth one day will be burnt up, rolled up, and it'll be no more. All our ballparks, our race cars, our fruits, our veggies, our plants, our house, our cars will burn up one day. I would hate to have you burn up forever and eternity in the lake of fire because you will not believe on Jesus Christ. And the love of God, as many people say we do not have that love, is that we are telling you what God has said through his scriptures. That you may not go to hell. And yet, if you reject the scriptures being preached to you, you will automatically pass go, and you will not collect $200, and you will not go to jail. You will go to hell for all eternity. And when you hear the preaching of the cross, when you have heard that Jesus saved, And you still die and go off into hell. It is to your foolishness. And yet the Bible says that preaching on the street is foolish. Corinthians. And yet the message is not foolish. To have a man get up with the amplifier, blah, 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 Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, that's foolish. And the Bible will agree with you. But when we preach Jesus, that's not foolish. And when we open up to the book of Psalms, if I could find it. In Psalms 14, verse 1, I'll show you what foolish is. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So preaching on the street is foolish in the Bible. And yet the message is not foolish. And a man to walk away from the preaching of the gospel to say, oh, there's no God, there's no Savior, you become the fool. Not the preacher and not the message. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. 
the Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. So God says to you that are filthy and of no good work, go eat all the world and preach the gospel. You see, many of them are not going to be in church tomorrow. And many of them are going to be in a bad church tomorrow. And many of them are going to turn to a radio dial church. And some of them are going to turn to a TV church. And many of all those ministries will not preach the gospel. And if you're saved and born again and know Jesus as your Savior, go eat all the world and tell them how you got saved. Tell them about how Jesus saved your soul. And it's funny how when you open the Bible, religions run. And they debate the Bible. As you debate the Bible today, hearing the Bible, there's no debate. Jesus saves. That's what the Bible says. And God never asks for your opinion. God does not care what you think. God is not going to sit down with you and discuss eternal affairs on how you think great you are. God has written it down in black and white, some Bibles in red, that Jesus said, I am the way Jesus said that, not me. You got a problem with Jesus being the way? You will discuss it with Jesus. As he will tell you then, you fool, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, because you're not washed. I never knew you. There is no way for Jesus ever to say, someone that has believed on him, to say, depart from me, workers of iniquity, because we have been washed in the blood of our iniquities by Jesus. And for Jesus to say, depart from me, workers of iniquity, you have never put your faith in trust. You have never been to the Lamb of God, which take away the sin. You are still charged with your sins. When Jesus will say to you, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. You're not washed. You would not listen to the preacher. You did whatever you thought. And yet, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, God himself will say, well done. You see, God can't say well done to a sinner in hell because you will keep burning. You will keep burning. You have never reached to the point as a stake that you'll be well done. You'll be in torments and being tormented forever while the Christian is well done through the finished work of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. There is no entrance into heaven outside of Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, the and the life. There you go. See, I'm not the only one that knows. I'm not going to heaven alone. This is not weird and odd, but I guarantee sometime today, Saturday, somewhere and out through this world, there will be at least two or three preachers that will get up and preach the gospel as people as such as you. And they might be the, amongst the heathens that you're so worried about. But what is the message? It's Jesus saves. Why will you not come out? 
Why will you mock? Not me. According to Acts chapter 9, again, Scripture, when you mock the preacher, Jesus Christ takes it personally. Acts chapter 9. You don't upset me. You upset me in the fact that you will not believe on Jesus. That cankers my heart that I look at people who are going to go to hell. And yet God comforts me through the scriptures and say, Hey, I told you, many will go. But I've told you to go preach to them anyway. And do you ever, preacher, do you ever expect someone to get saved? Few. Will you ever see someone get saved? Where's the promise in the Bible that says, I will see someone get saved? God just told us to go preach the gospel. He didn't say anything about results. God gets the increase. Hmm? God gets the increase. I planted, Apollos watered, and God gets to increase. Listen, I'd rather have three people in my family stand with me in Jesus Christ than have three people in my family, one out doing drugs, one out doing alcohol, one doing whatever. I'd rather have them all in one fellowship with God the Savior, Jesus Christ, living in innocent lives than the torment that you are living in the life you're living today without Jesus. The alcohol will not last forever. You may even get a blue flame for a while in hell from the alcohol. The cigarettes burn up and turn to ashes like your body will burn up and never become ash as it will always burn up and always burn up without being consumed. The pills. The government may make a way that you may not ever get those pills that you need. But the government may not ever prevent you from coming to Jesus. They've tried it. In church history, the government has tried to burn preachers, has tried to burn the Bible, has tried to torture Christians. And yet, 2018, the Bible is still preached. And the men that tormented Christians and the Bible are burning in hell today with a message from the book of Luke, Go tell my people, don't come to this place. That's your pope. That's your religion. Tell the people that Jesus saves. Kind of interesting. That rich man that went into hell never changed his attitude. That guy had the nerve to order Abraham. Go tell him to get me a drop of water. Go tell these people to do that. Give me mercy and grace. Ah, look at me. Oh, God, will you send someone to my five brothers and tell them not to come to this place of torment? And it's never recorded in hell that any man repents of their sins ever still. And if you repent not now, you're not going to repent in hell. Because repenting will not do you any good with your sins in hell. You're burning for your sins. When Jesus Christ suffered and died for your sins and paid the penalty for your sins, and in hell you will buy your own ticket. And that ticket will be for all ever to be without time, no end. Will you pay for your sins? Well, it's been foolish because it's been paid by Jesus. The Passover day, three days and three nights. Your soul has been paid to spend eternity into heaven by Jesus. And you flip your nose and your hands and your attitude towards Jesus.
and you're missing out on the benefits of salvation. To be saved is to go to heaven through Jesus. To be saved through Jesus, you get a new body. To be saved by Jesus is a body without sorrow, without tears. To be saved by Jesus is a body that will never die again. To be saved by Jesus is a painless body, a body with no more pain. The book of Joel, chapter 2. Scripture, my friends, The scriptures say, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, <coughs> and thou shalt be saved. There is no Buddha, there is no Muhammad, there is no Pope, there is no priest, there is no pastor, there is no one that can save your soul but Jesus Christ. In the names that I mentioned, they have persecuted Christians throughout history, proclaiming to be Christians. You don't know what your life will behold. The wages of sin is death. That can be still this morning. You have less than two hours before afternoon. And your body could be sitting in the morgue this afternoon. Where will your soul be? And you say, oh, it will be in heaven. Not without Jesus Christ, it won't. And that dear loved one that loves you so much. Oh, on Fred's grave, put R.I.P. Without Jesus Christ. And Fred will be in the grave in hell. Oh, oh, will you get to know Jesus so you don't come here and be with me in this place of torment forever. Erase that R.I.P. Because I am not at rest. And when a Christian dies, and the loved one puts the gravestone and says, R.I.P. And they laugh in heaven and say, hey, it's not just rest. Who is excitement up here? And we don't need electric amplifiers. We are raising our voice to the one on the throne. Glory, hallelujah. I wish you would hurry up and come and join us. There's a big difference between torment and hallelujah to God. The Bible speaks about the light of Jesus Christ. There will be no more sun, no more moon. And yet hell, the Bible speaks about darkness. You could not find your can of beer in hell. It's too dark. You cannot see your friends. It's too dark. And there is no mercy. There is no grace in hell. Oh, there's worship and partying and greatness in heaven through Jesus Christ. When that son came home to the father and said, Father, I have sinned against heaven. I want to get right. That father got the fatted calf. That father got the clothes. He put a ring on that son. And the party went on and has not ever stopped again. And the angels here, there's a man whose name is rain written down the last book of life. Hallelujah! Another one has come to Jesus. And a man in hell, he 
he's saying that man is preaching the truth to you. Will you believe that man that's preaching Jesus? Because I don't want you here. Your family does not want you to have a reunion in hell. Your family that are in hell wants you to be saved and go to heaven, the Bible declares. And only Jesus. And don't you dare believe these terrible witnesses because they're a cult of Satan. They have no idea who Jesus Christ is. According to the Bible, Jesus is God and Jesus suffered. God suffered and died that you may have eternal life. Our Creator suffered and died for the creation that you may obtain eternal life through Jesus Christ by believing in the gospel that he suffered and he died according to the scriptures. They have no scriptures and was buried and arose again three days and three nights according to the scriptures. As Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's bury, so must Jesus be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The heart of the earth is hell. And that's where Jesus applied our sins and deposited them. He went into hell and said, here's your sins. If you're to put your faith and trust on what I've done for you. You'll find that your religion will burn. You will find, according to Corinthians, that your religion is of Satan, the angel of light. You better be, you better be very careful to what Satan will have off to offer you. Because Satan will make it sound so good. It'll make it seem so right. Almost like you're getting the real thing. But John 8, 44 says he's the liar. He's the murderer. And what he has to offer you is a lie, no matter how good it looks. No matter how much whipped cream he puts on it. If it's not Jesus, the Lamb of God, if it's not Jesus, virgin born, if it's not the Jewish Jesus, you are lost and you will burn in hell for having the wrong Jesus. Paul warns the Corinthians, there's another Jesus. There's another gospel. There's another spirit. You got to be careful. Satan has a religion too. Religion is man-made, but Jesus Christ is God-approved. And the only entrance you'll get into heaven is through the blood of Jesus Christ, through the finished work of Jesus Christ, by the merits of Jesus Christ, by the righteousness of Jesus Christ alone. It is nothing and never can you do anything to earn salvation. To earn your way into heaven. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved.